Of course, we can't deal with Duchamp without dealing with the bride strip bear by her bachelors. Now, although Duchamp called the glass a hilarious picture, he took it seriously enough to devote eight years to its intricate execution. I should point out this is actually a piece, sort of paper pieces collaged between two pieces of glass, originally mounted to one piece, but then, uh, well, we'll get to that. Now, each element of the glass is a result of meticulous study, calculation, and experiment. There's actually considerable journals, writings, and sketches that he does, and we see some of them here for this piece. It's meant to be playful, and yet a serious, serious examination of humans as machines. And why is he looking at humans as machines? Well, look at the time frame, 1915 to 1923. This is World War I, and humans are being thrown into the breach or told to go over the, over the trenches and into no man's land as if they are nothing more than a number. Nothing more than a gun. They're being treated like machines. Even when you get outside of the military and you're looking at manufacturing, it is very much the same way. So he's ruminating on some of these ideas that are as old as the Industrial Revolution itself. How does this near mechanization of man impact us? So as we look at it, the painstaking details the complex interactions and the erotic tension between the enigmatic bride in the upper panel and her nine uniformed bachelors below. And here I've broken it up and you can see some labels uh, related to what these things are that you see. There's a chocolate grinder, there's sieves, there's a bit of scissors, there's some molds, which are the bachelors, uh, there's a water wheel. And these are all elements that he's cutting out of magazines or drawing to put in uh, on this glass. So it's really a remarkable piece. The top, of course, represents the bride. And here's the top, the bride, uh, depicted as basically a motor and nothing more. And we see these draft pistons or nets in the middle. We have nine shots off to one side. Uh, we see the shattered glass throughout. So this is Duchamp's rumination on the ever-confounding realm of desire and sexuality, something that we are constantly writing and talking about even today. A few years later, while in transit following an exhibition at the Brooklyn Museum in 1926-27, the two panels will be shattered. Ten years will pass before Duchamp repairs the glass, securing them between new panes of glass and housing the fabrication in an aluminum frame, which gives us what we have today. So there's actually three pieces of glass. There's the initial piece that the paper is mounted to. That will be shattered. He picks up those pieces, he puts them back together on another piece of glass, and then sandwiches a third piece over the top so that the broken piece, the original, is in between. Whole thing is put in an aluminum frame. Satisfied with the result, and the appearance of this eerily systematic cracking uh, in the upper and lower section of the work, he declares it finished by chance. So in other words, to him, it's almost uh, chance that came up and said, yep, that's done, that's the way it's supposed to look. And the thing that a lot of people focus on is the cracking itself and how oddly well-placed it is and how oddly symmetrical it is in a lot of ways, but remember, it's completely chance. Someone at the Brooklyn Museum dropped this and went, oh my, fill in the blank. And we ended up with this. Duchamp, just like with his ready-mades, is saying they're going, it's finished by chance. This will, of course, subvert the art world because art is supposed to be finished by technique, by skill, by highly skilled artisans, not by chance. You would never imagine Michelangelo making a mistake and going, well, I'm going to leave it there because by chance, that's the thing that it needed. So it's again Duchamp subverting the entire realm and idea that we have about art and the art world. 